May God guide her and bless all who sail in her. Now you can read the stories and see historic photos in a book celebrating the day-to-day -day activities at the former Collingwood shipyard. Like so many, George Zerny often found himself driving down to the Collingwood waterfront to have a look at what was then the town's biggest industry. The shipyards has always been a fascination to me. Even going down by the shipyards and going out on the spit on what we know now as Heritage Drive was a source of joy. Winter, summer, fall, whenever I went down there, I'd take a look at the shipyards and the ships would be in different bits of building that have half the hull, three quarters of the hull, the whole hull, and then one day there would be the biggest splash in town as the thing was launched. So when it went into the water, it displaced so much water in Georgian Bay that it swept right across Heritage Drive. People don't believe that to this day. I have to show them pictures. Not pictures in my book. What happened was I decided to accumulate the material that I had and then put it into a book as a tribute to the people who built ships. George took up a personal challenge to document the history of shipbuilding in Collingwood and to bring the reader up to date with what is happening on the site today. So I did this book that tells the story of now and then. And uh, I have it in hard copy, in hard cover, in soft cover. And uh, I did a second book called A Salute to Side Launchings because the Collingwood Shipyards book itself had more pages, more pictures, and I thought there should be a slimmed down version that just deals with side launchings. Today, tourism drives the economy of Collingwood, Ontario. The region is one of Canada's most popular four season playgrounds. But there was a time when the state of business at the Collingwood shipyard had a direct impact on the town's economic stability. Oh, it's something I knew right from the get go. The Collingwood shipyards was the economic backbone of Collingwood. And I think what surprised me was how significant that shipyard's effect, that economic effect was for years and years and years and years. It should have been no surprise, but there just was nothing else like it. People came from Collingwood and District to work at the shipyards and probably further afield than that. At one time there were 1,000, 1,200 people working at the shipyards and then during the war years they had female employees. In those days they were called temporary employees and women came to work at the shipyard. And I have a picture of some of the women who worked at the shipyards in 1943 in my book. Many young people were not fortunate enough to see a spectacular side launch at the Collingwood shipyard. You can't help but wonder how big of a tourist attraction this would be today if the shipyard was still in operation. And not just today. The, the side launch of a ship became a spectacle as it got more publicity. In the 70s and 80s, ship launches drew people by the thousands, not just from Collingwood and area, but they came in coaches. They came by busload the night before so they'd get a position over by the shear legs on that spit of land that leads to the terminals. And people would come from Michigan. They'd come from New York State. They'd come from far afield. And at the time, I was publishing the Enterprise Bulletin, and we used to have people reserve copies and give us the postage so that we could mail them copies to all those different places. So I know firsthand that it was a big magnet. George Zerny was aboard the Algoport during sea trials after its launch at the Collingwood shipyard. This ship had a unique beginning and tragic end of service. The Algoport was launched in 1979. It was launched a little differently, still side launched, but they launched it with the bow facing the Collingwood Harbor. They usually launched them with the stern facing Collingwood Harbor. So when it went in, it made the usual big splash. It was a phenomenal side launch. Everybody applauded. And then they put it into the launch basin so that for months, as they worked on that ship inside, while it was floating, for months it was a nice little treat, a superstructure of a ship at the end of, northern end of downtown Collingwood. And then they went on sea trials, and sea trials are like a test drive. They started early in the morning, they left at like 6 a.m., and 16 hours later they would pull into Owen Sound, and in all that time, they would test drive everything on that ship. And the sea trials were a phenomenal adventure. Uh, it's a day I'll never forget. It's a day I wrote about in my book, The Collingwood Shipyards.
The dream of every Collingwood kid growing up was to be aboard a ship during its launch for what had to be the ride of a lifetime. And George was fortunate enough to experience this. It was the Lake Wabush. The Lake Wabush was launched in 1981. And I got on board and I went to the bow and they had a railing there. And I asked advice from one of the people who worked at the shipyard about what should I do. And he said, hang on tight. I said, but I'm going to take pictures. So I wrapped my legs uh, around the railing and I held on really tight and took pictures as it was side launched. And I got pictures along one side and they were quite spectacular if I say so myself, but the ride lasted about seven or eight seconds. And it was like being on a ginormous swing and the pendulum went one way, then the pendulum came back. And uh, it, was a, it was a quick ride quite phenomenal, and if you've heard of white knuckles, well I think I had white knees for about a month. George Zerny came to Collingwood as a young man who was building his career in the newspaper business. When I first started out in the newspaper business, I freelanced for the Barry Banner and the Barry Examiner. That was back in the early 60s. And I just ran around and did whatever I could. I loved writing, I loved photography, I used to do all my own developing at home in a bathroom, darkroom, sink uh, type thing. And I had a lot of fun with it, and I really believe that any job you do, you should love. Get a job you love for life. So I was going to get into journalism through Centennial College, but I decided to go hitchhiking that year in Europe. So away I went to Europe and hitchhiked, and eventually met my wife-to-be, Nancy. I came back to Canada, and I'd been to the Barry Examiner before I left, and they'd offered me a job, but I said, no, I'm going to go to Europe. But when I came back from Europe, I still needed a job. So I went back to the Barry Examiner, and the managing editor at the time, Jerry McPherson, said, we don't have any jobs, but we have a job in Aurelia that we heard about. And I said, why don't you phone the managing editor there? So he phoned the managing editor in Aurelia, and I went for an interview, got the job, and I did every job in the Aurelia Packet and Times newsroom, and then graduated uh, to a choice of either continuing in bigger newsrooms or running a newspaper, and I came to Collingwood in 1977 to run the Enterprise Bulletin. Then I moved on in 1991, uh, vowing to come back to Collingwood, which I'd adopted as a hometown, and I published the Sentinel Review in Woodstock, and then I left the business after almost 30 years in it, came back and retired in Collingwood, and started writing. Available in many formats, the book is called The Collingwood Shipyards by George Zerny, and it captures the town's storied history of shipbuilding on the Great Lakes. 